The subject of this video is removing the fuel injector hard lines on these four and five cylinder diesel engines. Now this is a five cylinder turbo diesel engine in a 1982 300D, but these hard lines showed up on Mercedes diesel engines way back into the late 50s and early 60s, right on up to 1985. Now there's a number of reasons why you'd want to remove these. Number one, you may have to rebuild your fuel injectors or test them. Okay, so you're going to have to remove all these lines to get to the fuel injectors. The second reason is you may want to do a compression test. And in order to do a good compression test, the way I like to do it, is you want to do it through the holes in the fuel injector. So you need to remove these lines. Another reason, which isn't necessary but does make the job easier if you can get these off quickly, is anytime you change all four or five glow plugs, it's easier if you can get these lines off, okay? Now I'm saying quickly, if you struggle to get these off, sometimes it's just about as easy. Now there are one or two glow plugs that are easy to get to, and you wouldn't need to remove the hard lines, but I believe anytime you're gonna replace all five glow plugs or ream the carbon out of the glow plug holes, just take these lines and remove them, but remove them as a set. And if you have the correct tool, Watch here, and I'm going to show you how these can come off quite quickly. Here are your options for removal. These are 17 millimeters, so you can use a 17 millimeter wrench. It's a little tricky to get in here. Sometimes you have to get underneath like this, and, and you don't get much travel, so you have to kind of work it around inside the lines here. But this is kind of tough down here because you don't have a lot of clearance. You can only loosen these up and turn it just a little bit. See that? with an open net. So we came up with a wrench that we modified here in the shop to reduce the width right in here and to put an angle on it. Now this makes it much easier to get on these and you can see you get more travel than you would with a normal open end 17 millimeter and this angle helps you to clear those hard lines so you get a little more travel. This wrench works quite well but the wrench I'm going to show you now was specifically designed for this job. Look at that. You can see you can go right in here and get on that nut and look at the travel you've got. Same thing down here is you can go in and get on the top of these nuts and you can get almost a half a turn of travel even on these lower ones that are really close together. So this is my wrench of choice. And watch now as I demonstrate removing all five of these hard lines together. The first step is to come in here and, and unhook any of these vacuum lines or wiring that are clipped onto the hard lines, so those are free, okay? And then what I do is I loosen the bottom ones first. I don't completely take them off, but I loosen them enough. But I loosen each one about a half a turn. And once I get those loose, I'll come up to these top ones and I'm going to completely remove these. So I'm going to turn it just enough so I know it's real loose and I can do the rest with my fingers. So you have a lot of different angles you can get to, like on this... Uh, Number three, I can get to it over the front like that and then get the torque this way. Okay, the next thing I'll do is I'll remove this from the ratchet and I'll just do this by hand until I'm absolutely sure these are loose and are gonna come off with my fingers. Okay, now I'll get in here and spin these off. Having these loose down here releases some of the stress on these upper ones so you can get them off by spinning them with your forefinger and your thumb. And 
if it gets a little tight, you may have to come back in. And just get the rest of it off with the wrench. Okay, now I'll do the same down here. Make sure these are totally loose. You are going to lose a little bit of fuel here. So I'm going to stop right now and put some paper towels right underneath these delivery valves so the fuel won't leak down onto my motor mount. Okay, now I can remove these by hand. Okay, and just tip it. Slide it out underneath the vacuum lines. There you go. Now there's one more thing, very important, you need to do before you start your work on the engine. You can see here how exposed the tops of these delivery valves are once I remove the hard lines. You do not want to get any dirt down in here. You're going to have a problem. You can even damage a fuel injector if you happen to drop some dirt down in here. It gets up into the line. So before I start working on the engine, doing anything else, removing the injectors, I am going to put protectors over these. If you don't have these, you could use a shop towel. But I like to use these because then no lint can get into these either. I'm using silicone caps, and I'm just going to put a silicone cap over each one of these delivery valves. Okay, I have this protected, so now I can start removing those fuel injectors to overhaul them. I believe every diesel owner should have one of these wrenches. It really makes life a lot easier. I'm going to try to get the price low enough. I think I'll include these silicone caps with a wrench, but there's one other wrench that can be purchased separately, and that's the special wrench I have engineered here in the shop to get these hoses on and off easily. And if I'm going to remove my fuel injectors, I've got to remove these injector hoses. If the hoses are fairly new, this wrench will actually prevent damaging them, so you can reuse the hoses. But most of the time, if these have been on for any length of time, you need to replace these rubber fuel injector hoses, or you're going to have leaks. Okay, now I can remove my fuel injectors. When I get those rebuilt, I'll come back and just quickly show you how I get the hard lines back on quickly and safely. Okay, just a couple tips on reinstalling these hard lines. I've done the compression test, I've rebuilt the injectors, we've torqued the injectors, I'm ready to put these back on as a unit. And first I'll go ahead and remove these silicone caps and start with the bottom nuts. Notice I've left this paper towel here to keep any fuel from dipping down on your motor mount. That's extremely critical on these diesels. And we'll get these out of the way. And I'll just set this in place and line it up. The reason I start the bottom ones first is they're, they're the most difficult ones to get started. So just maybe two threads, that's it. Just to get them started. Get your hands around these lines. Okay, this is not quite lined up, so I'm going to give it a little twist there. Okay, I've all these started. Now we'll start the top ones. By leaving them loose, it allows me to, if I have to bend these a little bit, that's okay. You do not want to force these on. They should go on with your fingers. Now, see, this one needs a little bit of tweak. Push it down, 
and it should start by hand. If it doesn't start by hand, you want to go ahead and bend it a little bit. Here's another one that's slightly off. Let's see if number one will go. Okay, number two needs a little tweak. A lot of times when these get messed with because people take the injectors out and bend the lines without taking the whole one off. Now look at number three there. See it's slightly off so you don't want to force that. So I'm going to take, just bend that down a little bit, line that up, and now let's see if this one starts by hand. Okay, they're all started by hand. Now I'm going to use the wrench, and I don't need to show you this whole thing in the video, but I'll use a wrench and get all these turned down like this, and I'll tighten these down tight. Then I'll come back, and I'll run these in until they're kind of stuck, and then I'm going to back them up a half a turn. And I want to leave these loose at the top, until I do the bleed procedure. Now you're gonna to have to turn the engine over. You know, I'm not gonna cover it in this video because I have lots of videos about bleeding the system, but you're gonna to have to use a primer pump, pump up the system, turn the engine over with the starter until you see fuel coming out of each of these injector lines at the injector. Then we can tighten those down and we're ready to go. As a final note, you might wanna come back in and check the torque on each one of these clamps and you should be good to go. So you can see why I think everyone should have one of these wrenches. What I'm going to do is offer this on my website and I will include a set of those silicone caps at no extra charge if you purchase this wrench from Mercedes Source.